Before we do get started properly, I do have to ask, I saw on your TikTok a few months ago that you went to Disneyland Paris. And yeah. this isn't a bit, this isn't a joke. I am legitimately going next Monday for a few nights. And so first, firstly, how was it? And secondly, do you have any tips for anyone looking to visit? Interesting. Uh, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me ever in my entire life. That's how good it was. It was just amazing. And in terms of tips, I guess my biggest tip would be don't go on the Spider-Man ride. Oh, really? And because, well, it depends. I don't really care about the Marvel uh, movies. Um, I like Spider-Man as a character, but I wasn't such a fan of the Tom Holland movies, even though I think Tom Holland is good. Um, but the ride, just the queue is just immense because all those Marvel films are so popular. All the queues in the Marvel bit are just immense and the Spider-Man ride is not worth it. That's my only <laughs> tip, I guess I would say. And also, um, it depends on where, where you, where are you staying? Uh, we're in the Santa Fe, uh, the sort of the, the cars themed one, I think. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, I would say if you like uh, canned drinks, uh, bring your own canned drinks because I was forced into paying up to five pounds per can of Coke, which is very bad. Lord have and, mercy. So, yeah, I mean, it's have you I think you haven't been before. I lo a long time ago I've been, but um, it's not since all the new Marvel stuff and everything's been added okay i mean my i mean the parks are great my main concern is like how expensive the food is so take sandwiches or just they're gonna absolutely gouge you on the food that's the only thing that i would do different well we're gonna go every year we've decided and amazing so we're gonna make sure that we get the food situation but the parks are great uh yeah and just watch out for the the big cues on the marvel i guess everything else is brilliant oh and they kind of shut things down for this big fireworks display at every evening at about 10 so you want to make sure you get up before that happens but you'll figure it out just have a great time i'm so jealous of you oh uh, thank you i uh, i'm i'm a star wars boy more, more than a marvel boy so i'm going straight to star tours that's cool that's my yeah, star tours was fun although it's all in french oh okay okay he threw was like oh le monsieur le skywalker oh no le darth vader and you're like, what is going on? So it takes you out of it a bit. But I guess C-3PO is a language droid, so it makes a little bit of sense. Vader, not so much. That's it. I mean, is, is it like six million forms of communication? So I, I assume French is in there somewhere for C-3PO. Oh, maybe. Who can so, say? Who, who can say? But anyways, we briefly said hi off, uh, off the recording. But just for the people at home, it's been over two years since I had the pleasure of your company before. So how have the past two years been for you and how are you doing today? Wow. Two years, is it? Um... It feels I'm, like a lifetime of human history between now and like then. Like you haven't aged a day. I, uh, today I feel good because today is one of the days where I get to eat what I want. So I've already had a, a croissant and a couple of biscuits and I'm feeling pretty good. Might have a bit of cake later on and definitely some pizzas. So that's good. How have my past two years been? Well, let me think about that. I guess 2021, we were sort of coming out of the pandemic, weren't we? But we were still... Well, we thought we were coming out and then we went back in. I was still sort of promoting that record King of Clubs, although it was tougher to do because it was further away. So I, I was very busy is the answer, really. I did um, separation event in the springtime and then we were gearing up for, I think we did download pilot in 2021, which was a, a huge highlight. That was great fun. That was really wonderful, actually. And then in the winter time, we did our own tour, which COVID kind of scuppered again by with its last hurrah. And even though um, we were doing, you know, fully open shows and, and non-distanced, people still chose to stay away and I, I can't blame them. So that the, they were very sparsely, sparsely populated shows, but they were still fun. That was a bit of a bummer because I was looking forward to that tour to really put the tin hat on those two years of King of Clubs and to have it sort of come out with a bit of a wet whistle, as it were, was was a shame because I thought the show that Jacko and I had worked on was really quite accomplished um, and we'd done a lot of work. But, the, but you know, the shows that people did come to, some of the shows were actually, you know, quite full, like London and Manchester are always great and they went down well and it was beset by problems and our, our support band got COVID, so they had to leave the tour. 
It's a real last Raz. And then if I'm honest, going into 2022, 2022 has been quite difficult for me because um, it started in January with making my new record, which was fun. And whilst I was in that little bubble of creativity, um, you know, the world seemed very bright and I was having a good time. What what then happened was six months or so of uncertainty uh, regarding how and when it would come out and negotiations with different parties. And I changed a lot of my team uh, until eventually we are here, which is the ramp up to the record and everything's going smooth. But there was a, there was a period of about six months between, say, February and July. Don't check my maths on that. <laughs> that were very difficult because I didn't know exactly what was going on. I'd, I'd made this record and it, I really loved it and it was done and, and I didn't have anywhere to put it. I didn't know what I was doing with it. Um, and so that was a, a tough time for me, but uh, as soon as things got back on track, as soon as we worked out what the singles were, what the videos were, all the artwork, then, you know, that's my element and I know what I'm doing. So since then, since sort of summertime, um, I felt great. But yeah, it was a, it, it was a tough start of the year to me. I'm glad to hear that things are uh, on the upward uh, swing now. And um, and let's talk a little bit about the the new album, The Atheist, which I think on day time of recording it comes out a month exactly, uh, November 25th, I believe. Well, quite so. right. Well done. There's maths for you. It's almost like I planned that line before I hit record. No. Um, but uh, but f- the first thing I wanted to ask is the title, The Atheist. Um, it's it's quite, um, qu- quite an impactful title. I've wondered what is sort of the meaning or the resonance of that title for you? Well, a couple of people have said this now, which is great because I, want, I chose it to have an impact, The Atheist. You know, it is quite a statement. Um, and it's just a statement... Uh, I just felt it was time to sort of after sort of um, pussyfooting around with songs like personal on devolver about my relationship with religion and or god god really and religion <laughs> uh i thought it was time to really nail my colors to the mast and say look this is how i live you know i live in a in a godless universe for better or worse and uh for me that's a benefit that's how i cope with things um but it's not, I think a lot of people, and especially with the artwork, because the artwork is quite involved as well, a lot of people sort of get the idea that it's maybe a concept album about atheism, which it isn't. It isn't. It's just, you know, it's just a strong title and some strong artwork. There are a couple of songs, the first and last song on the record do deal um, directly with the concept of atheism. But then the rest of the record goes into lots of other areas, which could be seen through the lens of, you know, a godless existence. Uh, I talk about a lot of social problems, but I also talk about, you know, my relationship with my wife. And the background to all of that is that I don't, you know, all these things that exist and all these things that I have in my life exist for me without God. So if you're talking about a social problem, you have to think about that without some sky wizard to rely on. If, you know, if you're thinking about, how much my wife means to me, which is absolutely everything. You have to wonder how much she would mean to me if I had a sky wizard as well. Do you know what I mean? And and I think, you know, she means more to me because I don't she's all I have. She's she's my favorite thing. If I was um going to church every Sunday or whatever and giving all my income to the church, I might feel differently. So it, i guess everything I do filters through that lens of atheism, but the album is not about atheism. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely, and and um, it's it's a really uh, cool way of putting it. I think he's not a person I particularly enjoy listening to, but um, Ricky Gervais had something on a chat show once where he said the the reason he's an atheist is that there are however many gods in all of the different religions in the world, like millions and millions, but uh, by being an atheist you are just discounting. Like for example, a Christian would say all of those gods don't exist bar one. <laughs> but as an atheist, you are just saying, no, that one doesn't exist either. So yeah. uh, so that's that's the way that I was like, oh, yeah, so that does make a heck of a lot of sense. And perhaps he's a bit more militant than I would normally say, because if you want to live your life, do your thing. But but yeah, no, I, I really I like the the way of thinking. And um, and just going into sort of the rest of the record uh, is, as, as you sort of mentioned in uh, other press uh, recently, it's a much more positive vibe compared to particularly King of Clubs, which was quite cathartic and really angry in mm. places and you mentioned at the start of uh, of our chat that you were in quite a, a pleasant bubble making that re- record um how was the recording process 
if we sort of strip away sort of the uncertainty that followed afterwards? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that when I went into record, I, th I had a whole schedule laid out. This is the problem that we, we had a plan and it got absolutely kiboshed um, as soon as I'd finished making it. So then became the, the uncertainty when we were making it. Uh, you know, I had a, a big budget, which is got a big for me, big budget for me, which allowed me to rent a very beautiful studio in Chichester for a whole week. Wow. Imagine that a whole week. And we stayed there. Uh, well, I've never done it before. I've never done a residential studio stay. So that was a new experience for me. And it was just the whole thing was very luxurious. It was me, the producer, Mark and my wife, Katie, who agreed to, um, sacrifice her week and come down and hang out with us as she had bits obviously she was doing work at the same time we both work mobile so that was fine and she had uh managed to arrange a lot of business meetings in chichester which is very handy so she wasn't there the whole time um it was just luxurious is the, is the best way i can describe it the surroundings themselves the building itself is this beautiful old church i mean the irony of making a record <laughs> called the atheist in a disused church uh was not lost on me and everything you need is there. They've got all the gear. You, you've got a beautiful piano, drum kit, whatever. And so anytime we needed to play something or add something, you know, if we finished the drums on Wednesday, for instance, we were still going in on Friday and adding a bit of, you know, ride symbol because it was all just set up. So we, even though we worked fast, we, I didn't feel rushed and we got into a great rhythm where I, I tend to sleep until like 11 or 12 which I know is a bad habit, but I, I stay up quite late. So I tend to sleep late. Whereas Mark, my producer has children. So his body clock has mutated. So he wakes up at like 4am or something, you know, to try and train some nappies. So what would happen was we'd record all day, all afternoon, should we say into the evening. And then I, we would both go to bed or maybe I would stay up a bit and watch some movies. And then I would sleep in whilst Mark was awake, fixing all my bullshit from the day before. <laughs> So I, without hearing the raw takes, I would come down in the morning, afternoon and say, hey, let's listen to yesterday. And Mark would say, here it is. And Plesh Payne, it would sound absolutely golden. And he would have all my fudge notes, whatever, he would have massaged them, you know. So I lived in this bubble that I was a complete genius and everything I played was completely perfect. And then I'd go, great. And then we'd do the next one, you know, and, it and so it would go on. So I have um, him to thank Mark Roberts and my wife for creating an incredibly comfortable atmosphere for me to be able to do my best work. You know, I, I spend half of my life like this evening, I'm going to go uh, do the tickets on the door to one of my wife's events. And this weekend, I'm going to stage manage two shows for her, which means looking after the artists, making sure they have everything they need, making sure everyone goes on stage on time. And I love to do that because I love to support artists because I recognize the artists, in order to perform their best, they need to be completely comfy. They don't need to be worrying about any outside factors. So that's why I love to do that. But in turn, I need to be sort of cosseted to a degree and comforted when I'm the artist instead of the technician, so to speak. So the fact that um, Mark and Katie supported me throughout that process meant that I had a very enjoyable time. And I think the music came out great, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I could, I couldn't agree more. I think there is sort of this, uh, th this thought that sometimes you have to suffer for your art, and maybe some people work well in those environments where they're put under under pressure. But you can't sustain a life like that. That's that's not a pleasant experience or existence. So I do think you need to have some some mod cons to to really get in that zone and not, as you say, not have other things to worry about. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of record you're making. You know, um, or, or sometimes that will affect the outcome. You know, usually for me, the studio has been a, a stressful experience. Um, if you if you think it were someone like in Nothing We Trust that I did with the band, it was always tough in the studio with with the band because we were sort of fighting against each other at the same time as trying to work with each other. And particularly in Nothing We Trust came out, you know, it sounds painful to me because it was painful to make. Uh, whereas something like... Um, the thing is, I'd written all the songs before I went in the studio. So it's not like those uh, comfy surroundings are influencing the actual notes going down. But it could be that it influences the way they are played, you know. Mm. And so if it has, if you are happy, I think it's probably possible to play some of the songs on The Atheist 
angrily <laughs> and I wouldn't have wanted that so it was a good job I was happy when I was playing them you know la 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 and then they come out happy and that's the vibe yeah I mean I for example one of the tracks which I amongst other people who have seen you live in recent years have been able to hear is Bad Friend which first of all I'm real happy that I'm going to be able to hear the studio version because up until now it's just been like old phone recordings on YouTube I'm just like is that am I hearing that right and everything but yeah. uh, but that is a song that I could hear especially with some of the you know the, the lyrics which are very bittersweet that I could see play quite angry if uh, if the mood the mood took you so yeah I know I completely agree and uh, and speaking of sort of this support network that you you've sort of were able to build around you um you have added one extra person to your to your live setup which is the outrageously talented jen from the outrageously excellent false advertising so um along with uh, jack and her how has the dynamic been since you've been playing as a three-piece yeah it's been great i think we're still finding it really because we've only done three shows which is uh hard to imagine we've had to to um change the way we rehearse because not only does Jen live you know four hours away in Manchester Jack has also moved a little bit further away um to Brighton since we did for instance the KOC tour King of Clubs so for someone like that and for all our previous engagements Jacko and I we would just sort of be like rehearsal next week fine and he'd pop down and, and we'd do it you know it's just us but now it needs to be planned like a military operation and Jen has also been filming on my videos so we've had to that affects how we do the videos because if she's already down we want to make sure we can get a shoot in either the day or after or the day before rehearsal so we've had to get very uh, tactical about it I, I mean we've spent a lot of time together in rehearsal but not really on the road so those relationships i mean the road really i want to say tests a relationship i think we're all old enough that none of us are gonna throw each other out of a van but um uh we're, I think we're still in the sort of the honeymoon period, should we say, do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm waiting to see what that unit eventually becomes because it's only through the sort of uh, tempering process of tour that you really click. So, I mean, it gets better every time. For instance, we did a show with Lonely the Brave. We did Download, then we did Arc Tangent, and then we did a show with Lonely the Brave. And on the Lonely the Brave show, I thought, wow, this is really starting to come together now, you know, because we'd only fucking played twice before. So I think it can only get better, but I don't think it's set yet. You know what I mean? Jacko and I have our own, our dynamic is pretty solid in that we know, you know, where we're going to be. But throwing Jen into the mix, I think I'm still waiting for that. It's sort of uh, still settling down. Cool. I mean, uh, if it was anything to go by that uh, harmony video you posted either yesterday or the day before, I think it's going to make some beautiful music. So I'm looking to, so. I'm looking forward to seeing how the the relationship develops. Um, and I also have to say, when you mentioned the road a second ago, I couldn't help but think of a fella called Jeremy Lonsdale, who uh, oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's uh, he's a pretty cool dude. It has um, been. <laughs> shush um anyways uh we'll talk a bit about uh live stuff because you've got some shows planned for the rest of this year particularly exciting is lemania 3 uh up in manchester i was lucky enough to be at the first lemania down in london and wow. uh, it, it was it was incredible managed to uh, uh nab the set list off the uh off the stage which was pretty cool right um, um yeah it's uh it's exciting that this is still going on so what else how or have you got anything new this time around that you're looking forward to showing the uh the audience well yeah sure i mean for me every time i go out i try and change things a bit well if not in terms of you know band members or instrumentation uh i try and put you know some new songs into the set every time and even between say arc tangent uh, and these new shows and Lem Mania, you know, there's a bunch of new songs that we're putting into the show, um, sort of delving back into my back catalog. The difference is that on the autumn shows that are starting next week, no one's going to have heard the record. Whereas by the time Lem Mania comes out, people will have heard the record. So it, it makes sense to shove a few more in from the record there, but also going back to previous records I made and the odd fan favorite, which, you know, when I say fan favorite, I include myself that you know i like all these songs so it's it's if you want to hear a ruben track that's fine because so do i you know and and jen and jack i think they like all those old records as well so it's fun for them to play um so yeah it, it, mainly it'll be like new material well i've got a new fucking guitarist what more do you want i keep having to remind myself that 
that the majority of the country, the majority of the people that would come to my shows haven't seen this lineup yet. And I'm already thinking in terms of, right, well, what could we add? But I sort of need to slow it down and be like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We haven't seen this yet. Most of the country, two festivals and one support slot in Cambridge. You know? <laughs> so so my brain is already moving on, but I have to stop it and, and just enjoy this lineup of the three of us before I start adding loads more bells and whistles. I mean, Jen is a pretty big bell and or whistle. Jack's the whistle, Jen's the bell. I don't know. What does that make you? Oh, I did the wood block. That, I yeah. mean, how else are you going to keep time? How else are you going to keep time? Um, and you mentioned, you know, the fan flavor is delving back into tracks from from your band. Um, it'd be remiss of me not to mention the fact that I think very, very soon um, the re-release of your of Ruben's first EP uh, pilot um, is uh, being uh, is, is coming out with uh, some early Angel demos as well. Yeah. Um, so first of all, are, are we going to see any deep cuts hit the road anytime soon? Anything off this record, or is this very much a uh, you know a, a just a, a thing for the record? Because I know you said that you haven't listened to a lot of these tracks in some time before this this re release came about. Do you know what? If I was a smart man, maybe I would have put one of the songs from Pilot into this new set. And I have to reveal for anyone that's watching that. I haven't, I haven't done it because I didn't, I'd forgotten about because there's so much going on, you know, one week I'm concentrating on the pilot issue, which is very exciting to me. And then the next week they're saying, oh shit, we need all the artwork for the atheist. And I'm going, ah, God. So yeah, I guess when I was putting the tour set together, I'd forgotten about pilot, which is maybe a bit of a dumb move. I mean, I don't know um, if any of the tracks of pilot would necessarily, I try and approach it as to what would make the best set of songs. And also now to make the best use of Jen, now she's here. So I, I guess I'm concentrating on songs that um, make best use of, you know, a guitar that could go off in a separate position. Whereas recently it's been me just holding it down on guitar and bass. So for that reason, amongst many, um, yeah, no, there's nothing off pilot in the set, which is not to say that I don't like all the songs off pilot and especially the new ones that we, discovered literally on a tape in a box in my loft uh when i had my loft converted and i had to get rid of all this old junk it's like it but it sounds like a story doesn't it, it sounds like a, a a press release that someone has made up but i literally was up in my loft clearing stuff out and i was like the fuck is this <laughs> it was a tape of five songs that i'd forgotten that we'd recorded with our original drummer when we were called angel by the way we were we were called angel when we recorded pilot we only changed it um just before the record came out and the original art as you'll see on this re-release said angel because we were called angel and it was only at that point that someone was like you should probably change the name because it's terrible so we we did it because otherwise that wouldn't have been the first ruben record and and we were always planning the long game we wanted this to be the first thing that people would hear and people would look back at our records to come in the future and go back to this first one and we wanted that under whatever brand that people would come to know. So we were always thinking of the future. And it is crazy that um, people are still, I mean, I spoke to the label the other day. I think it's been selling night like hot records, hot cakes. People are still buying this um, record that is essentially, essentially, it's a demo by a school band. You know, we were still at, I was still at school. I think the other two had just left, but I was still at the school that we'd all attended when we made Pilot. So that's fucking nuts that it's on vinyl 21 years later and people still buying it. And it's, and it, do you know what? And it's worth it as well. It's not like shitty at all. It's good. It sounds good that we had it remastered. I, I listened to the test press the other day. It fucking rocked my socks off and they're good songs. You know, some of the lyrics are maybe a bit, a bit teenage because I was a teenager, but, um, yeah, I stand by it. God, that was a long answer. Sorry, buddy. That's all right. You're, you, I mean, you're talking to a guy who's still waiting out for the Me versus You re re release. Oh man, if you want to talk about cringy, <laughs> cringy times, that's really where. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I, never going to happen. Me versus you. I need to hear oh. "Spank the Monkey" live. <laughs> oh God, how does "Spank the Monkey" even go? It's like, da, 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 oh yeah, da, da, God, da, da, I'm really trying to be um, Kurt Cobain at that point. <laughs> God, I can't believe you. Um, Remember that. I think there's some uh, whoa, there's some bad lyrics on that. Okay, let's not discuss it. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that one alone. I I don't know if you've come across it, but I actually uh, popped a video on YouTube about a year or two ago, which was the really wanky the uh, brief history of Ruben, which was uh, literally just like a 
12 minute documentary about the the history of the band and so i've like done the full deep dive into into all of that stuff and i really dig it i really dig I, it i did so. see that i would did, did you 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 reviewed those uh demos on that christ all right let's hope no one else hears them <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i actually heard anything lest uh you know the uh the algorithm sort of say oh no this is blocked you don't own the rights but but anyway no i i obviously you know life and music and art is all a progress a process and progress and uh you need to you need to get through your own personal cringe before you can get to the stuff you really dig, or at least that's what I find. I guess um, so. I mean, I'm still in my own personal cringe phase, but uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. But, I think uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm in my flop era. You know, flop era is very popular at the moment. Maybe I'm in my flop era. I could do that. I mean, uh, we're 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 all we're all on a journey, and uh, I look forward to my own flop era. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, um, one of the last questions I have to ask you is: uh, 2022 is wrapping up scarily fast, and you've already got lots planned for the remainder of the year. But what does 2023 have in store for you musically? Well, musically, I guess with I mean, this album really is only going to be launched at sort of the, you know the end of the year, really with only a month left to go. So that sort of explosion, the uh, aftershocks of that explosion, if you will, will hopefully reverberate into the first half or the first quarter, at least of 2023. Um, I guess, I don't know if we're going to take another single off the record. I guess we will. Uh, I hope we will to, to sort of keep that rolling. And then, you know, I'm hoping to do a proper, you know, long album tour. These autumn shows really were just to sort of shake a leg to to stretch our, our limbs and and to lock that band together in the way that i um described earlier but also to sort of warm us up as it were for len manchester you know we knew len mania 3 was going to happen uh when we announced the autumn dates but we couldn't say you know because we hadn't got all the other bands locked down um so that they sort of come as a bundle they're like a little warm-up lap for the big party at the end of the year and then uh but then a real tour, you know, going up to Scotland or the way down to the um, to Kent and to um, Cornwall would be really great. You know, a, a very concise, comprehensive set of dates so to really give as many people a, as possible a chance to hear these songs in a live environment. Because, you know, n not just what Jen's adding to them. But also, you know, Jack has been working really hard. He's a fucking genius. And I listen, I've been working really hard. I've been uh, training my voice, although you might not hear the difference. I've been training my voice because a lot of these songs are in a higher register. So I've been, there's a lot of hard work going into it. I want people to hear that. Uh, and then going into the summer, I guess, well, more, um, I'd like to do a lot of festivals. It seemed like this summer, every fucking week there was some festival that i wasn't doing and i was i got a bit anxious you know i just want to get out there especially now i've got these songs and i've got a sick band that can play them um so yeah live 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 as for releases yeah i don't know i guess we'll have to find um a, a quiet period to sit down and contemplate that lol but uh, <laughs> who knows that my that my label are really more in charge of that kind of thing whereas i can say listen i want to go and do these shows and whatever Cool. No, that's that's really exciting because uh, um, obviously with me being uh, in Disneyland next week, I'm going to have to miss the autumn tour. But next year, next year, I'm going to you, you'll see me there. And uh, the uh, the five pound cans of Coke are on me. That's for sure. OK, God, thanks. Someone got to help me out. Jesus. Brother's got to help a brother. But I have one last question to ask you. And if anything, it is the most important question I will ask you today. Mm -hmm. And that is I have known from previous interviews and and junkets you've done that you are a big fan of cereal and so yes. for once and for all definitively what is the best type of cereal when you say best type of cereal what do you mean do you mean uh as like a muesli or a corn or a, a wheat or do you mean what is the best cereal brand yeah there's the, the second one the second one that's a difficult question to answer because cereals used to mean a different thing you, uh, a cereal used to be like a bowl full of shit it used to be like sugar 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 who gives a fuck have this arteries whereas now cereal is this like bland rubbish flavorless cardboard that's still marketed as like chocolate marshmallow shapes but it's actually just some 
uh, government controlled crap. And it will not surprise you to learn that I regularly write to cereal companies and say, look, man, no one's buying your cereal, mistaking it for health food. It's called like jelly stars, right? It's not called salad crunch. We know we're not going to get more healthy when we buy this crap. So why not just give in the poison? Give us the poison we want. And I'll go to the salad aisle if I want the salad. You've got to give people. And there's it's the same with the sugar tax on food in general and all these fast food taxes. Those things only make sense if you think that the general public are morons who can't look after themselves, right? The, the idea of putting a sugar tax on foods is essentially an incredibly patronizing thing for a, a government to do to a people. You can't look after yourselves, you poor baby, so we're going to take it away from you. How dare you? I'm an adult. I know what I want. And it ain't the kids buying this. It's the mum and dad say, no, you can have this. Yes, you can. So forgive my rant because I care so much about cereal, right? Cereals nowadays are awful. They're absolutely dreadful. The only way you can get a cereal that tastes like anything that tastes at all is buying them at uh, hideously jacked up prices from imported um, American companies. The only cereal that you can buy in a UK supermarket, which tastes of anything is, uh, it's like a lucky charms thing from matey, right? I it's, know which one you mean. Yeah. They, um, is it from matey or multi or something? I, th I think it's matey. Yeah. Yeah. It's not lucky charms. It's like crispy bits with some marshmallow things and that's got flavor, but everything else on a UK supermarket shelf it's just cardboard rubbish because they're so frightened of getting sued for making kids fat when in fact it's, you know, other people's responsibility, let's face it, not the manufacturers, that they've taken all their sugar out of cereals. But back in the day, the number one cereal would have been Wheatos. Wheatos were the be all and end all. And I used to eat <clears throat> and, you know, I was a victim of the cereal to complain about um, cereals hoiking back the sugar to protect children. I was a fat kid and I was fat because I ate so many Wheatos, right? <laughs> right? That's why. Because no one told me, my parents included, hey, maybe don't eat three bowls of Wheatos every fucking morning and then complain about being fat because I was unhappy. And so now I know the first fucking thing about nutrition. I've sorted that shit out <laughs> and it's all fine, but there's no getting around it. I, I got fat because I was eating so much cereal. Uh, and because the cereals were very bad for me and st I would still prefer that they were bad for me and that I just had a modicum of self-control, you know, but, uh, Wheatos, oh my God, Tom, is there even any uh, space on the server that this, uh, the zoom is going through for the length of my answers? Oh, so absolutely. No, no. I honestly, on a day, particularly like the one we're recording, if you were ever to run for office, on a, on a mandate of improving the quality of UK cereals. You got my vote, mate. You got Thanks, my vote. Mate. Thanks. Um, wow. This has been an absolute... In, this has been an inspiration, not just a delay. I feel like I've been given the gusto and the energy to get through the rest of my Tuesday. Jamie, thank you so much for chatting today. It has been a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me.